the Center for Research Nebo History and Culture. Today is today is Wednesday. Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, the twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty second of December, twenty twenty one, and I have with me here a guest, and I know you would like to meet her. So I, I will not stand between you and my guest. I will just allow her straight away to talk to you. So, Madam, you are welcome to the Center for Research in Igbo History and Culture. Thank you. Uh, my friends out there, I'm sure by now they are wondering who you are, so will you help them? Well, my name is Ebele uh, Arenze. I'm from Amogo. I'm from Amogo, Nei Umwe. Married to Nobi in the Demili local government. Oh, all the way, you go far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, why, 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 can you let us into the secret? Why did you choose to go that far? That well, far away, all the way to Nobi. That's where love carries you. So, I guess love carried me across <laughs> to Nobi. <laughs> That's nice to hear. Yes. That is nice to hear. Do you, do you, would you like to share with us how you found this love and how you came to transport you all the way to Nubi? Well, yeah, it's been a long journey. <laughs> we met in Lagos, actually. He came from America to visit his parents and somebody introduced us. He saw me and he said, well, this is it. So he went back and sent his people to come and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> uh, that, that is nice. So would you say it was love as first sight, second, third, fourth, or how many I'll sites? I it was love at first sight. Just the first one was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is nice. Yeah, that is nice. Now, now um, will you tell us about what is happening here today? Because I see everywhere bustling and people gathering. Actually, today is um, uh, I had a, a foundation, uh, Arinze and Ekwalo Foundation, that I opened up. And uh, today I wanted to do like a little Christmas for the widows. And that's what is happening today. You know, to do like a Christmas, do a Christmas for the widows today. That's what is happening today. Okay, so it's for the widows. For the widows. And I was always already salvating. <laughs> I was salivating when I saw all these goodies coming out. I thought uh, you are going to. Yeah? So I have to be a widow to qualify for no, this. No, you don't, you don't, <laughs> don't wish that. <laughs> yeah? To be a widow. So that I can say with somebody, uh, my fellow widows. <laughs> well. <laughs> Pardon me for that. It's yeah, not. Uh, it's not something to. It's not something to joke about. Actually. Yeah, it's a mm. situation. Mm. So, how did you come about this decision to do something for widows? Most people this time will be thinking of how to have a party, a Christmas party in some nightclub or some other place like that. Why did you choose widows? Actually, myself, I'm a widow. Unfortunately, mm. last year. My husband of 21 years passed away and in fact that's what prompted me to do what I'm doing today to help, you know, look at my fellow widows and encourage them as little as I can. It's not that I have but I just want to encourage them to, you know, tell them it's going to be okay, you know. We don't have to question God about any situation we found ourselves, but um, it's just what it is. In every situation, in every circumstances, we should give God thanks for everything. That's why I felt compelled to give out something. That's what's happening today. In the light of what you have said, I see the my little joke about our fellow widows was not uh, in good taste. Apologize for that. Okay, I apologize for that. Uh, would you be stoking bad uh, uh, 
you know, sad memories if we were asked to ask her what happened. You know, it never goes away. You know, even mm. that day they were buried, my husband was just watching, watching him being lowered. As at that time, mm. I was still feeling how I wish he would just get out from the coffin and come back to me and the children. Mm. But it never happened. I was watching. I said, so that's it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? But, well, so we cannot question God. I said, my watchword is always Jeremiah 29 verse 11. That's the only thing I always hold on to in my life. Uh, you, feel your, you feel your pain. You feel your pain. Um, you can understand in the light of that your desire to minister to people who have gone through the same thing. They say he who feels it knows it. If he feels it knows it as well. So uh, now um, you are doing this. Uh, what, are, what are you planning actually for the widows? What are the plans? Well, I have a... Uh, like, uh, um, Mama. Rice, I have beans, I have uh, tomatoes, I have oh. onions, I have um, maggi ingredients to do Christmas, I have oil, uh, that's what I have to, you know, give them. And I have a little chocolate that I will give them to have a sweet taste today. <laughs> do, do, do you love uh, chocolates? Love chocolates? I love it, but I try to stay away from it. <laughs> I try to stay away, uh, really. Uh, because I, yeah. I was thinking when you mentioned chocolates, I know it's something most people don't think about, <laughs> except you discovered about it some way. Yes. <laughs> some way you know. um, it's well. I, I think I love, it's one of the few things that I do love myself. I like uh, chocolates and I like uh, coffee. Coffee, oh. I like, I like coffee. Yes. Apart from books, coffee is something that I just don't like books. If I can find a good, uh, a good one. So you are going to make sure that the widows have food on the happy. table yes. this Christmas. And this is the first, it's going to be something that we'll continue doing by God's grace. Oh, it's not a one-off occasion. No, we'll continue You're gonna continue it every year. Yes, that's what God placed in my heart to be doing. So, how many are the beneficiaries this time? Uh, we have about uh, 50. 50 for a start? 50 widows, yes. You think big? If you're going to do 50 now and you're going to do it for some time, you're going to be growing. So, you are, we'll be talking about thousands. Uh, As God is blessed. I'll be blessing my fellow widows. Yes, he will indeed bless you if, if you have that kind of heart. Mm -hmm. 50 for a start is not a mean, it's not a mean thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, we here at the Center for Research in History and Culture, we are with you. Uh, we will think with you, we will plan with you, uh, and uh, we will go hand in hand with you as you pursue this vision. Thank now, you. now tell us about, uh, from what you said, this is Arrange and the Kualo Foundation. Uh, so, what can you tell us about Arrange and Kualo Foundation? Well, Arrange is my married name, and I follow is my maiden name. Okay. And I put it together because you know, married and uh, my maiden. And it's not it's not going to be only the widows. You know, I'm going to include the children. The, Plus, plus um, semester, you know, the foundation also paid for 50 primary school school fees here in the community. So it's not just gonna be the video. okay. So this is not actually the first thing that you are doing under this foundation. No. Mm. Last semester, and uh, that's what I will continue. The foundation will continue. To help the community. So the, the outreach to school children will also continue. Will that will also Bank continue. Mm. So how, how are you determining the beneficiaries for these uh, programs? Well, it's uh, pretty much need-based. Need-based. People that 
people that cannot, you know, the, the poor, the less privileged in the community. That's how we do it. It's strictly need-based. People that can't afford it. There are some people that don't even know how to do Christmas this time around. So it's strictly need-based. My interest is how you are going to determine those who need this because uh, I've been involved in these things uh, myself a lot and I find the problem is that a lot of the help intended gets diverted. People people who are by no means widows come up for widows' benefits and people borrow children. When Even when you tell them to come with children, they borrow the children and come. I've been involved in this at uh, a very large scale. So how are you going to determine who actually needs this? Well, I have uh, some people that really help me out. They know through the teachers. They talk to the principals of the school, like the one that I did before. They have, uh, you know, the principals that they talk to that knows the students first-hand students that have not been coming to school because they cannot afford to pay school fees. So that's how we get the list. And even the widows, we have a, one of my relatives in the community that knows, really knows them. They are the ones that organize the people that really need it. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, friends out there, I am here at the Ekwalo compound at uh, Nei. Nei, Amugo Nei. Amugo Nei. Umweri. Umweri is in Anambra East Loop Government Area, Anambra State. And uh, I'm here with uh, Mrs. Hello. Ebele Arinze uh, of Arinze and Ekwalo Foundation. And we are talking about the program she has today, reaching out to widows to make sure that they have uh, a Christmas that they will enjoy, that there is food on the table uh, this Christmas. Mm. And now, uh, <coughs> Madam, I want to pursue one aspect because now you are doing this and I would really like to see it grow. I would like, really like you to, to see you do as much as possible and um, without running down yourself because if you are not sustained you might the vision might be good you, you might have the zeal but like a lot of people have seen you might be forced out disappointment pressures and things like that and one area i find one area i find that contributes to this a lot is the area of financing is there a financing and um how do you intend to approach this area or how are you approaching it? Okay, well for now I'm gonna be doing it, you know, out of from my pocket. I know I have uh, good friends, you know, that believe in me, that uh, you know, trust my judgment, knows what I can do, what I'm capable of doing. I know like when I go back they might Say, so, Abby, this is a good cause. I will support you. But for now, I'm doing it out of my pocket. Out to of the your best pocket. of my ability. Oh. From the little God gave, blessed me with, that's who I'm going to bless the widows and the less privileged in the society. Oh. That, that, that's very good. The idea of starting somewhere and yes. then, uh, because. Um, a lot of people have a lot of beautiful visions, but the vision is so big, they are waiting for the resources. And, uh, but another person says, I think somebody said, I will not let what I can't do stop me from doing what I can do now. So you do the one that you can now, and God will meet you, uh, God will meet you along the way. Mm, and, uh, so actually, we are, like we said, it's a good thing. Is a good thing. The Bible says that he that gives to the poor is actually lending to God, and God does not owe man. Okay. And then um, we pray that he will not owe you. We know that he will not owe you. Amen. Amen. So now, as uh, somebody who is recently bereaved, what would you have to say to other people in similar situations? Well, the only thing I would tell them is um, 
we cannot question God. We didn't ask for it. It's unfortunate that it happened to us. Like, uh, you know, it, it looks fresh, it, like last year when my husband was sick. I did everything, you know, I did name it. Monastery, name it, all in the whole, in fact, the whole world prayed. The whole world, the whole community where I reside, everybody was praying, really, because my husband was was a he was a general giant mm. he has no enemy so everybody was rooting for, for him to get away but unfortunately what happened happened and i said okay we cannot question god so my advice to them is uh, let's look unto god like i said my watch was jeremiah 29 verse 11 keep holding on to God, that God is the God, God said he will be the husband to the widows, that he will not let us, you know, I just want them to see me, you know, and uh, God will take care of us and our children, I know each of us have children, God will take, I have three, God will help us, God will not let us be ashamed, that they should hold steadfast with God, pray, if anything is worrying, yeah, I cry. You, you All cry? The time. I do, <laughs> I do, but you know, I cry, I finish, I clean my eyes, I say, God, this is in your care. So, God has been so wonderful, blessing me, taking care of me, so that's what I want to tell, share with them, tell them to hold on to God. Hard work. They should never let anybody humiliate them because of their condition. They should hold on to God. Hard work. Peace. Peace. That's what I want to, you know, tell them to hold steadfast. Hard work. That at the end, they will rejoice. And so what about the matter of remarriage? What will be your word on that? <laughs> well, For those of them who are still young, because you know that is wicked. It does not, uh, it, it just strikes randomly, yes. random acts of wickedness here and there. So what will be your word to those people who... Well, it's a card? personal choice. If you want to, yes, I, like myself, I am, I'm, I'm 44. Not that I'm that young. If they want to remarry, it's, it's okay. You know, they can pray about it to get somebody that they can marry and move on with their life. You know, but me personally, I have three children. My children are my priority right now. So and they are teenagers. So they are my focus now. I need to take care of them. One is, one just got into college, then the other two will soon get into college. So that's what I say is a personal thing and a personal choice. If they want to, if you decide to like me personal, I don't want to get into somebody, you know, who said you're taking your time. Oh, we are not talking me. about you now. You are you are so recent okay. and uh, yeah. so so we are not we cannot be bringing up okay. about you. But we are asking this because having dealt with widows and uh, some of the as a minister also, these are the issues that keep uh, coming, coming up, up and we are, a lot of people are having problems. Some, uh, some uh, women are going through a lot because doctrinally and socially they feel compelled to stay single, to remain single from a very young a very young age. Even if it's not a young age, I recently I saw somebody of 80 marrying so uh, why not so where there are no uh, peer blocks or social blocks or cultural blocks to it and there are cultural blocks to some of these things but that lives if it's not handled if there's no proper counsel some people languish in pain in trying to satisfy these uh, cultural blocks so we're talking about your feeling about your counsel to those who fall into this uh, category you think they should respect Look at what their peers are saying or what somebody's saying. Or not. Well, I don't think you know. Like I said, it's a personal 
campaign That's if you want to like mm. everybody knows what they want mm. like i know what i want and they know what they want mm. but you know being in this uh, community at times the you know like poverty hardship all those things make someone to feel that they have to be you know get married or mm. i know we have needs mm. as well mm. But everything I keep saying is pray about it and ask God for guidance mm -hmm. to direct you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I would think is the best thing for each and every because each person's situation is different. Mm -hmm. Each person's situation is different. My case might be different from the other person, but at the end of the day, we, we all have needs. Yeah, I agree. And now you are bicultural. You are bicultural. You straddle two cultures. Ours here in uh, Africa, Nigerian, Umweri, and uh, you have been living for some time in another culture. You know. So do you find the if we are, we are having this discussion now, say in America, will you give the same answer, or do you see a difference? Would your answer be different? I'll still give the same answer. Mm -hmm. I will still give the same answer. I wouldn't change being in America or being in Nigeria. I'll still give the same answer. So you're saying that, this, that, the, that the pressures, the, the considerations are the same? To me, both sides of the Atlantic? Uh, with a little different because like when you're over there and you walk, you know, you, you can take care of your you, work, you have that work gives some amount of independence exactly, of thought exactly. uh, yes, and liberty. That's the only difference. There's some escape, some, some ability to escape. escape. Yes. Yes. That's mm. the only difference, being over there than mm. being here. Mm. Some people have so much needs over here. Mm. So, with a little different, I would change my perception, but mm. it's the same. Basically, it's very the same. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been so nice uh, talking with you. And like I said, uh, we feel your pain, you know, but you already have the right uh, perspective on it, on life. And uh, we appear also to have that saving faith, that faith in, in God and His Word that sustains you. And I see you being a source of strength to those people who find themselves uh, as widows. and. Uh, as the less privileged as we refer to them you know you're already doing something for the widows you have already done things for uh, in terms of education and things so we um are saying that we are with you thank you very much so we'll proceed with the program thank you very much so friends out there the center for research Negro history and culture today is still wednesday the 22nd of December 2022, and we are still at the Kualo compound at Amaugo, um, Neyi, Umweri, where Mrs. Arinze, Mrs. Isabella Arinze of Arinze Kualo Foundation is ministering to the widows to make sure that they have a Christmas, some of the smile about this Christmas. So remain with us, remain with us as we